I'm Ryan. I have you Jesus from the camera. We have Hellfire Inceptions. And we are sitting here with from autumn to ashes. Do you mind introducing yourselves, please? I am Mike. I'm Brian. I'm Jeff. First question. It's been a while since uh, 2008. Can you bring us up to date? Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, how, much, how much time do you have? <laughs> well, I know you guys had some solo projects, correct? Yeah, there was, there was, there's been a lot of music. Yeah. Um, there's been absolutely no from Out of the Ashes until what, October of last year? Yeah, October of last year. It started in 2014 and we started rehearsing. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're all like kind of did, you know, just doing our own, uh, doing our own thing. Yeah, our own things, music and trying jobs. to make a living, yeah. Yeah. Not nothing too terribly exciting. What's <laughs> well, keeping you guys busy? Yeah. 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 Getting the bills. <laughs> That's what matters, right? That's so what we gotta do. That's what we have to try to do. <laughs> um, back in the day when you guys did start. How hard was it to come up in the New York scene? Uh, uh, or was it easy? Because well, you guys brought a different yeah. market to the hardcore. I think back then, because there was so much music going on in Long Island, and it kind of made it a little easier because there was always shows and to, to get on shows and to, just to get out there and get our name out there pretty fast. So. Um, I mean, we pretty much recorded like 3,000 demos and just hand them out for free at every show well, we, we were at. So. Recording 3,000 demos would be a lot of work. There's one demo. Is that, is that what <laughs> three thousand copies. One demo. Three thousand copies. Three thousand demos would take forever. Well, that kind of goes to one of my other. That kind of goes to one of my other questions I had because I'm a, I'm an old head from way back in the day. Today's my birthday. I'm 42. Uh, Happy birthday. I that 42. Matters. Yeah, 42. You know, I, I'm glad I get to see you guys on my birthday. You know, but <laughs> right. One of the other questions I did have is, you know. I think this is true. I can't remember, but did, back in the day, didn't you guys have to sell some band equipment and stuff like that, like to get the demos out there? Yeah, and, originally. And get them. For, I mean, originally, yeah. I mean, I think no one wanted my equipment at the time. So I, I, think that's <laughs> I, 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 I think I think like I don't know if it was equipment. I think Scott sold like tried definitely tried right, to sell right. blood and semen and all kinds of stuff. Because um, it was hard. Yeah. Well, yeah. It was very hard. It, it's it's well when you're young and uh, it, you know it's hard to make money to, to do these right. things you know and then, yeah. and then to, 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 to go on tour and stuff like that. It's uh, it's definitely um, it's definitely difficult. You know it, you, you you play a lot of shows that you, you, you didn't make a penny. You know so pretty much yeah. So it's definitely it's like a do it yourself attitude no matter what from day one. Totally. And that's how hardcore is, I believe. Right, right. You know, there's a lot of, lot of you know, we all, kind of, we all kind of grew up in that. And then, you know, we met a lot of people that way. And, it, yeah, like I said, it kind of helped us get our music out there a little bit where we just don't want to get us on the show, open it up, play even if it's five people at the time, you know. So it's, it, was a, it was a good environment to be in because it was, it was a lot of great bands coming up and performing well, well before us on the island. So, yeah, it was. It was definitely a good time to, uh, to be there. So, yeah. But what was the first thing that got you guys interested in music? Was there a certain band? Did, did you in, pick up in hardcore or in music in general? Music in general. <laughs> oh, like wow. when, you, when you picked up, was it when you picked up your first instrument? Was it in school? I uh, I mean my 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 father's family were all musicians and everything. So I from as long as I can remember was exposed to music, um, and then. When I was in third grade, uh, I got uh, Kill 'Em All from Metallica. Oh my! And <laughs> and yes, yeah, so good dudes reaction are, in the background. Yeah. Silently <laughs> cheering in the background. They could come in and cheer if they want. Come on, dudes, come out and cheer. Bro. Come on in. Come on in. Another inc incredible Long Island band, right here. Right? Yeah. So, Extinction AD. Yeah, these guys. So. Oh, they're, they're amazing. Yes. yes. Very yes. good. We got one hiding over there. That's amazing. Long Island. <laughs> um, so for you, how about you? Um, <laughs> that, was a, that was a different story. I kind of there was not one bass player anywhere around my school or anything like that. So uh, a few of 
few of my friends were uh, musicians, and I always thought about it, but I just, I mean, I was a little more like, I was grew up like listening to hip hop, played sports, this and that, so uh, they, they kind of forced me to go buy a bass because they knew nobody, and uh, we were always, you know, hanging out, so uh, that's how it started instrument-wise. And I was always interested in bass, it was always something that caught my ear, listening to music too, so uh, that's kind of how it started with me. But. It's because you have a deep voice. I got a deep voice. Uh, my, my dad was a musician, so he, he played drums. So he, he got me started pretty, pretty young. So that, was, that was my why I started playing music. Because I saw my dad playing drums and I would play them. Uh, I got into like metal and hardcore stuff. I went to a Catholic school. Me too. And one of the big things, I remember there was, this, there was one kid in particular, an older brother, who was really into metal and he'd bring these like tapes in at like lunch or recess and bring a little tape recorder, you know, Walkman thing. He'd be like, you gotta listen to this. Like my brother, I found it in my brother's thing. It's like satanic. It was like, it was, no, no, no. It was like, it was like Slayer is like hella weights. Wow. Like, and I was in like probably sixth grade. And it was just like, that was just like, oh, yeah. crazy. And so I just started exploring. I used to go to the record store and look at record covers. Even though I hadn't heard the bands and just imagined what they would sound like. Is that so how you based I, I what too. you would buy? Yeah, I have to, I'm like, I did my that. big thing is like I, I used to love looking at like all the Iron Maiden record covers and like looking at the Iron Maiden covers and seeing Eddie, I just assumed it was the most <laughs> I pictured it sounding like Napalm Death or like <laughs> I, I or something. And then I heard it and I'm like, this is not what I I was imagined. the same. I remember there was a there was a TV commercial on, I think it was like a drunk driving commercial or something, way, way back, like late eighties. And they were at an Iron Maiden concert, and you know, saying like, "Don't drink and drive" or something, or like, "Eddie's gonna eat you." Or oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was the first time I'd, I'd seen the, the name Iron Maiden. Like they had such cool logos and shit. And I really, really thought, like you said, that they were like, like a you know, Camel Corpse or something. You know, I didn't, I don't know if I knew what Camel Corpse was at the time, but I thought they were the heaviest thing ever. And then I saw the commercial, I was like, oh, well, this is. At all, but I, you know, I was fine when I finally heard it. Sure. I'm like, this is cool. Yeah. But I'm like, I wasn't disappointed. But Crocus was the big disappointment. Crocus's album covers did not wow. match yeah. what they sound like. Tangent. Sorry. Good one. Uh, That's where my band obsession started. Yeah. Awesome. Pantera. I, I went through a, Quick a long, long Pantera phase. That's still there, but uh, yeah, like mid late nineties was Pantera was definitely at the uh, you know the sun rose and set over over Pantera. So. I think if you were exposed to Pantera and you listened to it, you got into it, you'd never get away from that. Exactly. And, <laughs> and you know what it is too? It's it's you know I, I don't know if it was the same for anyone else, but like when when I started going to hardcore shows and stuff, um, there there did seem to be kind of an attitude of like, oh well, if it's not a hardcore band or something like little DIY band, then like it's like the other guys, it's the bad guys, the big bad guys. And Pantera never really seemed to fall into that category. Oh, like no. everyone who was into like not everyone, I'm sure, but like people that were like you know going on shows and stuff would still be like, yeah, Pantera's the best. You know, like they they never really got that kind of you know like oh well I'll push back yeah the, the scene right kind of thing yeah so yeah I, I mean they were able to do it on all levels if you think about it right yeah you know you know look when Far Beyond Driven came out you know it hit the Billboard it was number one right. it was like right. the first metal exactly. record to do that yeah you know so you know they I think they get a lot of respect from a whole sure. genre right. Right. Sure. if you want to include rock alternative metal, yeah thrash and all and that. those records still hold up yeah you can listen to to, to Vulgar time now, and it's what, what is that? Twenty five years old now, something like that. I mean, it's it's really yeah. They old. just had the twenty fifth anniversary. I mean, that's and it's still ferocious. You know, it's 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 awesome. ridiculous. Yeah, the songs yeah. still hold up. It's it's yeah. They're they're killer. I just said killer, by the way. I <laughs> said that. Um, since you guys did grow up in a very very predominant hardcore area. All three of you, what was the first hardcore show you ever attended? I know mine. I don't think you I, ever forget that. When I got into it, the first show that that, that came up was 
been uh, Vision of the Sword, VOD. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, thank you. Um, the, show, the first show, I was like, all right, I need to go, like, finally go to the shows and see if they were opening off the corner. <laughs> the Roxy? Phil, at the Roxy. At the Roxy. And and Phil so, from Pantera did a track with them together. Yeah. Right. So it's on imprint. imprint. Yeah. On Imprint, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that was one of my first big love, like, as far as, like, a hardcore band. So, that was my first show. My, my uh, first show was, was VOD also. Um, oh. It was VOD... Uh, VOD, Mind Over Matter, uh, and a band called Loyal to None, and and VOD, Loyal to None had done a split, and it was their like record release uh, show for that, and it was a really really like I was like I was like oh, ten or something, I, or maybe maybe a little older, but uh, and I remember being terrified because it was just nuts. Uh, Rob, what was your first first show? Uh, First hardcore show. Hardcore show. show. Like, not like concert time. Like, it was like some big thing and call us play. But I don't know where it was. <laughs> it, was like <laughs> it was like 100 bands and call us play. Uh, Come on so. in, Rob. Alright, I'll be here in a minute. Alright. <laughs> He's eating. He's, He's, like eating. He's, He's eating. He's eating. He's eating. He's uh, well, mine is, mine's different because I grew up in Pittsburgh, so there was a different, you know, course, different yeah, scene, scene kind of thing. Uh, mine, mine are probably more obscure. Uh, there was a band called Passover um, that was really big with a lot of my friends and I, and Passover ended up being the main influence for what ended up becoming Zayo. All of us would go see Passover. That uh, the singer from Passover is pretty much where Dan got the idea to do his vocals, like the higher pitched. I mean, this was like pre carcass like so that was like that was the influence of the, the higher vocals and like a lot of what they were doing. Uh, it was I think it was like Passover, and I want to say it was uh, I want to say Os Rotten was on the show, and they were they were more like crust punk kind of thing, and they, they, they ended up merging a new band called Plus and Christ. But Os Rotten was really big around Pittsburgh and like the hardcore, crusty punk scene. Wow. That was my, my first show. My oh. first show. I can picture Jeff back in the crust punk days. <laughs> I always got more into like the, more of the crust punk type side of stuff than the, the stuff that would fall in like the, the B of e kind of category. Right, right, right. So now with the music you guys are going to write, us forward, will there be a lot of those influences? Uh, that's assuming we're right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We haven't really discussed well, it. Right. We haven't really discussed it. it. Right. We haven't even talked about it because I think we've been just really focusing on doing these shows um, and um, you know trying to prepare for this because uh, you'd be surprised how much you forget in seven years or so. Uh, you know, so so I think. After the, after this tour is is wrapped up, then I think we'll probably discuss it further. Um, you know. yeah, right. But until then, we're just kind of playing shows. And it was also kind of just like dipping your toes in the water. Yeah. You know, too, like, do, does anyone even care anymore? Right. Like, you know, we just like kind of did it. And we're like, just have fun with it and see how it goes. Like, so I think you guys will do very well. I <laughs> Thank you. There's been some really great shows. Yeah, so. yeah. That's, that's what matters, you know. Because this tour goes well for you guys, and I think if the people are hungry enough, then maybe that will. You know, right. Okay, yeah. we need to write some more stuff. Yeah. There's and a lot of younger people coming up too. They're like, I never got a chance to see you. You were 12. You know, I was 12 when you guys stopped touring. I never got a chance to see you. Yeah. I did. Yeah. So it just makes us feel old. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you guys feel about the new scene now these days? You know, with some of these new bands. Uh, how do you guys, you know, for me it's hard to tell. Like, cause I don't even feel like I'm so disconnected. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's because it's so weird because like bands that we, you know, when we were touring before, bands that we toured with, or, you know, there's bands that are like playing arenas now. Yes. And then there's bands that, we were opening for that have broken up because no one was going to the shows anymore, or and it's, it's just so strange. Like it's, it is definitely a disconnect. Yeah, like because I mean, what's going on? It just seems like these days some of the bands that 
you know, pride you guys listen to and I listen to, you know, they're they're not able to do it anymore. Yeah. Like some of them, I mean, you know. A lot of them. There's been a lot of bands that have broken up in the last month. Right. You know, and I just think it's, it's a shame. Part of that relates to my next question. Is like how do you guys feel about like when it comes to you know when you do make a record you know and if you don't put it out yourselves or you do put it out yourself if you're on a label and expect this money to sell if people download it these days is it even worth it you, you know what I mean and maybe that's where some of these things are coming from oh yeah you know it's just an assumption you know but I feel that's maybe what it tells these guys it's time to put on the brakes yeah well I think. I think the, that on that level of things, are, that's changed so much in the past 10 years. That's changed so much in the past five years. Um, you know, since, or even since the last time we made a record. What was the last time the record came out? In 2007? Uh, 2007. Um, I mean, even that, the, the, the times were, were kind of closer to what they were earlier than what they are now. Um, you know, now Beyonce sells 200,000 copies and it's considered a success. Right, and when, it, when that record came out, when the last, when Holding a Wolf came out, it was right at the peak of uh, Mega Upload, Send Space, You Send It, when people were just like, posting links to yeah, 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 yeah. everywhere. It was like insane. And so, like, Holding Wolf comes out and the label's like, oh, well, it only sold X amount of copies, and it's like a third of what the last record did. Everyone's like, oh, this is a failure. But in reality, everybody's sales were doing that. Everybody's was cutting the third. And you don't realize it until later that that was, it was, you know, we, we were, everyone was on the inside, including the label, not really realizing how widespread it was. Because I think it became very detrimental to yeah. the, not only a lot of fans, but every genre. You can sure. throw every genre into it. Absolutely. You know, today, still to this day, myself, I, I will go buy a CD, not because I'm an old head, but I know it goes to the band. Yeah, right. right. You know what I mean? I don't want to get it off of Spotify. I don't want to get it off of iTunes. You know, it's just not me. Yeah. You know, I like having a physical copy. Yeah, you read through, through the book. I'm, the the I'm, the I'm, the I'm, I'm a collector. Like, I like to collect like 3,000 CDs in my house. I don't know how to use a computer, so. <laughs> I have to buy them. Yeah, I, I, still, I still like to buy I, I bought records on this tour. I bought a bunch of records. Like, right. I, I like that. It's just that's how I listen to music. That's how I like to listen to music. I don't have a Spotify account, not because I, I'm against it. I just don't listen that way. Yeah. Me. Streaming. Do you need through? Say hello. Say hello. Say <laughs> hello. Um, favorite band you ever toured with? Oh, man. I'm sorry. Are we with? Yeah. Okay. For me, Dillinger is good. Yeah. They're, just, they're just fun to watch every night. It's like it was always fun to like, I couldn't get my stuff packed up soon enough and go watch them because it was like, what's going to happen? What are they going to break? What's going <laughs> to... When he was on uh, uh, the Golden Guards of Words with uh, Chino, the death time, I mean, that was insane. Yeah. You know, you know, keeping yourself with a microphone, you know, that was crazy. Yeah, that, that was a great band to I was a fan of them. I, I enjoyed watching them every night, and that, I, just, the, I, I just like those guys. Don't look at me. <laughs> there's there's my, so many. My brain doesn't work as fast. Uh, yeah, there's, there's been a lot. Um, there are a lot, and I, it's hard to say favorites because we've made a lot of friends. Oh, I understand. But I think I'm gonna go on the like just purely on the fun factor. I'm gonna go Shadows Fall. That's a good one. That's yeah. real good. Fun guys. That's a good one. Yeah. Two good ones so far. I'm going Shadows Fall. You. Come on, Mike. <laughs> I think it was like a like a fan before like touring. Be in a band would probably be Alpha Oh yeah. That's cool. Is that alright? Yeah. That's great. Is that good? Yeah. Jesus. Jesus approves. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter. I like that. The, uh, if you guys could sit down with a piece of paper and write down like a dream tour. Do we have to be on it? Yes. Oh. Oh. 
Well, that really does it have to that be ruins it has to make marketing sense. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, absolutely not. Jeez. As long as it makes sense to you. See, part of me, we've had a change of heart. Yes. We were very, that we have in our, in part of our, you know. Our, our, our daily routine? Uh, well, part of our tour rider going out. Like, we're very hardcore David Lee Roth era Van Halen fans. <laughs> Before we left, we said we don't want any Van Hagar played in the club. That if you're going to play any, any Van Halen, it has to be Dave. But in recent events of uh, Eddie Van Halen, this billboard interview, right? Yeah, like really taking it to Michael Anthony for no reason. We feel we've become Sandy Hagar supporters. Yeah, because Sandy came it's to Michael Anthony. Topic of everything. Yeah, right. and Michael Anthony. So I think fantastic. would like to tour with Sandy Hagar because it'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, and it'd be a lifestyle tour. He'd take you out on his boat. Yeah, lifestyle. And, uh, he probably has a fire pit on his boat. Yeah, I think that would be the dream tour. Yeah, it'd be like, called the lifestyle tour. Yeah. Probably be grilling every day. Oh, yeah. Sammy probably has a grill. Yeah. It's just be called the lifestyle tour. Yeah. And yeah. Sammy's a lifestyle guy. Boats. As long as, as long as you never wear lace-up shoes. Yep, Sam will be on the tour. <laughs> <laughs> Shorts and Sam Sam shirts every day. Socks or not. Yeah. A lot of shoes. Yeah, it'd be like going to like a, it'd be going to like like an island resort, but you'd be like taking it on the road. Well, that's the thing. That, but that's the tour. It only tours Caribbean islands. That would be great. Yeah. You know? I guess you'd probably have to stop in Mexico, or Cabo, but it's not a tourist. Does Michael that, does does Michael Anthony still that. play with Sammy? He's a chicken foot. Yeah, and he's also in another band. Yes, as well, I don't know. Yeah. What's, yeah. what's Sammy's uh, solo with, with Michael Anthony? The, the circle. The circle. <laughs> I read that yesterday. There you go. Up to date. I'd like to hang out with Michael Anthony too. So so I would love to hang out. Like he's a lifestyle. So they're right? they're headlining. Yeah. We're on the bill somewhere. Uh, I don't know who else you put on. I know I put on. Good. Cool the gang. Oh yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Dance yeah. music, good yeah. time. Yeah, I'm gonna say that's good. I think. That's Sam what I'm Hagar, If you let us man. loose, the tour would would be a marketing disaster. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Sammy, Sammy, and Cool and the Gang would draw a lot of people. They would not want to hear us, right? At all. Yeah, We're but that's there. okay. We're just there to hang out, warm, Sammy. warm the stage up for thirty minutes. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going with that. I, yeah. I can go. I have nothing else to add. It's a beautiful thing. Unbelievable. Lifestyle, guys. Unbelievable. Cabo Wabo. These are. This is the stuff that gets discussed. This is what we talk about. I'm good. I'm glad. You know. Um. Uh, <laughs> One vice you have to have while you're on the road, no matter what. I know what it is. For this, for this tour, Red Bull. Oh yeah, Red Bull. I don't think any of us drink Red Bull at home. I I don't drink. We'll Red pull Bull up to a gas station and everybody's walking out with a can of Red Bull. It's so gross. You can smell it in the band. Yeah, too. yeah. Like when four people have Red Bull cans open, you can smell it. We've had so much Red Bull over our career that it doesn't even work on you. We used to get pallets of that stuff in every gym. Yeah. It's so gross. You guys should be hitting them up for a sponsorship. Well, <laughs> uh, no, because then it would be, it'd be, it'd be too available. I, we could have little Red Bull, like, girls running around with the packs on, and like, hand out free Red Bull. Yeah. Will the car follow us around? The car? Yeah. The problem is, is that they probably give me, I would end up having a stroke or some sort of yeah, yeah. Some coronary event, you know, and, and I don't want that. I, if, you know, I, I don't want to be killed by Red Bull. Yeah. I just don't, you know. I mean, there's, there's got to be other things that are way cooler than mine. It's kind of embarrassing. I have a heart attack, it's got to work. I mean, well, this is a short tour. We could have survived it. But if we were like out for a month solid, like, I'd have a couple of times. Even if you're overseas. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not sure if, if at this point in any. I mean, we're all. A bit older now, and I, I think we're. I mean, even if it's a certain type of food. Oh, uh, well, just uh, you know, what? yeah. There's been a lot of kind of junk food, and I feel terrible <laughs> right now because of because I did eating like that. Like, oh, know. Jeff had pizza six days straight. Yeah, I had pizza six days straight. Six days straight. Yeah. With Red Bull. Yeah. <laughs> no, I actually, well, yeah, not a company. I've been laying off the Red Bull. I did it one day, and I didn't. I think what it did. Yeah, I mean, for me, the vice is probably like just junk food yeah. and like fast food, but I don't eat that at home. Yeah, same here. Like, I don't eat I don't even I never <laughs> like New York guys. Like, I, like, we still want to get pizza at all these it, it's, it's in the blood. Not that it's all bad. Well, I'm not, you know, not knocking, knocking, you know. 
Well, my wife's from New York. Yeah, I mean, she hates every pizza place in the world. Yeah, I'm the same. But I'll still eat it because it's pizza. But when you get to the hotel at three in the morning and there's nothing around, doesn't matter. Yeah, you're calling Domino's. Yeah, you're calling Domino's. That's the only place going at three a.m. and I'll deliver it. Well, now they offer so many different varieties: wings, pasta. It's just so amazing. It's like fine dining. Yes. Well, any any last thoughts? Anything you guys would like to say to your fans or? I mean, an overall. Thank you. I mean, it's it's been an incredible run so far, and we're excited to be back, and glad you're supporting us. See where it goes. Yeah, uh, same thing. Overall, Just, thank you. And, yes. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> you know, this tour is a, the, all the bands on the tour are awesome, right. and uh, I think it's safe to say that every person on this tour is pretty awesome, um, which is rare. You know, a lot of times it's like some jerk, you know. There's, you get that many people that are you know in the same place every day. Someone's got to be an asshole. Of course. Um, but I don't think there's any assholes. Definitely not. Um, I mean, there's just plenty of them. Physically. Unless one, one of us is the asshole. Oh, and they're all talking about, about that. Yeah. Like, that's a thought that's going to fester. <laughs> oh, wait, it's Spencer. He's an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> um, but besides Spencer, he's a total asshole. Yeah. Uh, everyone, everyone else, everyone else is on the really, really cool. Really 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 right. That guy's a dickhead. <laughs> so mean to you, Ryan. He's mean to me, so it's <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's what I got. Well, I can't thank you guys enough for your time today. Well, thank you. I hope you enjoyed the interview. Yeah, of course. And thank you very much, you guys. Thanks for talking to us. Check these guys out.